Solar-powered cars have been around for a while, never being more than a table on wheels with no practical use and have so far only been used for endurance races. But that all is changing thanks to a Dutch startup company called Lightyear and their production-ready solar-powered EV called the Lightyear Zero. Hello people of the internet, I'm Nico and today I'm taking you on a sunny trip to shed some light on the future of transportation that both you and I didn't see coming. But let's hit some of Lightyear's big claims first. One, you can drive around for up to seven months without recharging in sunny climates such as Portugal. Two, even in cloudy climates like in the Netherlands, you can drive around for up to two months without charging. And three, the Lightyear Zero has a claimed range of 1,000 kilometers or just over 620 miles. But how? How in the Toy Story flippity gibbets can the Lightyear Zero buzz around basically to infinity and beyond without recharging? The answer lies in solar panels. Basically what happens is that photons, which are kind of the particles of light, hit the cells of the solar panels. The panels, like everything, are made up of atoms and are bonded together through their electrons. These electrons are then knocked out of place by the photons and travel along wires to power whatever is connected to the solar panels. That's a gross oversimplification, but now you kind of get the idea of how they work, and I need to get out of the sun. And the light year zero has five square meters of the things on its roof, which for my American viewers is about the same as the front of five washing machines, which is nice and all, but it's not very efficient and it's not enough to substitute charging with a cable. And that's just problem number one of this car. Problem number two is with the big claims of how long you can drive around without charging. If given ideal conditions, the Lightyear Zero can mathematically, probably, drive around for seven months without charging in sunny climates and two months in cloudy climates. But I'm sorry to say that life is an absolute unit of a b and doesn't allow for ideal conditions. If you pay attention to electric car tests, you'll have seen this. EVs not reaching their claimed range most of the time or only reaching their claimed zero to 60 time on a full charge or whatever. I'll explain why EVs behave as they do in my next video, but the point is that there usually ends up being an asterisk attached to the gospel of the manufacturer. And there definitely should be an asterisk attached to the 43 miles of range per day that the solar panels give the light year zero. So far, every solar powered car has been a table covered entirely by solar panels and they were super Super stripped out, lightweight, and hopelessly impractical. And any regular car with, you know, four seats and doors, if they had solar panels, they simply couldn't cover as much of the car and would then only be able to power the accessories like the radio, for example. And now Lightyear claims you can get an extra 40 plus miles of range every single day. I'd be willing to bet that most days you won't be getting that. Finally, driver use will play a big role in how far you can actually go, and that will depend a lot on the environment around you. In Europe, where city design is often better and more compact, making the distances shorter, you should be able to reach light years claimed time intervals for charging fairly easily, but in the US, where you have to drive literally everywhere, I doubt the odds of reaching light years claims are very high. And with this point being made, I need to loop back to the claimed 1000 km range, which is based on the average commute in Amsterdam of about 50 km a day during the summer specifically, so not 1000 km in one trip. That's a nice slap in the face for you, and here's another one. The Lightyear Zero, with all those asterisks, costs over $260,000. Keep in mind that there will only be about 940 units of the Lightyear Zero made, which contributes to the high cost along with all the patented solar technology within, which would of course be made cheaper if more units were produced. It's still an absurdly high price, being over double what a Tesla Model S costs, but while it's lacking the charging infrastructure, the insane acceleration, autopilot, and of course the Twitter presence of Elon Musk, the Lightyear Zero still has some things going for it. Firstly, in testing, Lightyear got a run of 350 miles on a single charge at highway speeds, which is something that basically any 350 mile claimed range EV could never do, and is something that only the Tesla Model S long range could beat, though I honestly doubt that even the Tesla could beat it without cutting some corners like turning off air conditioning. The only other one that could come close is the Eptera solar car with its super aerodynamic capsule shaped body and three wheels, but I find the Lightyear Zero to be more impressive actually as it manages 350 miles with a regular shaped car body that doesn't compromise usability for efficiency. So top tier range and it does so in a battery pack that is 40% smaller than that of the Tesla Model S long range, so less materials are used to achieve the same range. This of course is very eco-friendly, a predominant theme in this car. If you ever get the chance to look inside the Lightyear Zero, you will find an abundance of plant-based leather and fabrics made from recycled bottles. And if you take a look on the outside, you would find that the body panels are made from reclaimed carbon fiber. The Lightyear Zero is likely the most eco-friendly car on the market, though not the US market as it's not coming here. Future models will be coming to the US, however. 
And there's one last thing to consider here. This is their first car, kind of a showpiece to the world to prove that their idea works. So if it works, they earn some cash and maybe get some more investment so they can make a more mass produced car. And from that money, they can then make a more mass produced car and then a more mass produced car and so on until they finally are the successful pioneer of a new mode of transportation, which used to be seen as a bad idea. Sound familiar? Because Tesla once started off with the ambition of making a fast and cool looking electric car and look at where they are now. The Lightyear Zero, like the original Tesla Roadster, was a compromised car. And while I probably wouldn't buy either one even if I could afford it, I'm definitely excited to see where this goes and maybe, just maybe, this will be just another alternative in the future car market. Do you think Lightyear is going to blaze a new path like Tesla did? And comment below why you think so. Until next time, people of the internet, peace out.